SwiftUI lets us disable interactivity for a view by using allows hit testing as false. In this project, that means we can disable swiping left or right on cards once our timer has hit zero. Start by adding a new modifier up with our Z stack that controls all our cards. This one right here. We're going to say dot allows hit testing time remaining is greater than zero. So if time remaining is one or two or a hundred or whatever, then it'll allow hit testing or swipe as normal. Otherwise it won't. So that allows to end the game smoothly when the user runs out of time. Of course, the other option is they haven't run out of time. They've finished all the cards normally. And uh, right now is if I just swipe these cards away, you'll see uh, they all slide up again, again, again. And eventually the last one, our time will just move down to the center like that. And that's, it's quite nice. It works well enough. But of course, the timer won't stop. If I had done that much, much higher up in the timer, let's say I was in, you know, starting immediately and I'm, I'm really good at my answers. I know these are going to fly them through them super fast. Like this, uh, I'm here, go to the last one, the timer just carries on, which isn't really fair. You want to kind of say, okay, you've, you've answered them all, we can stop now, hurrah, let's move on. This takes a little bit of thinking because, uh, well, first up, when we've finished, we want a button that says, do you want to start again? But also, uh, when the app moves to the background, uh, we automatically set is active to false. When it comes back to the foreground, we set is active back to true again. So they might have finished, is active is false, go to the background, foreground, and is active will put back to true again, sort of defeating the purpose of the pause and the timer, it'll just restart. Anyway, we'll tackle this piece by piece so it makes more sense. First up, we'll add a new method down here to reset our cards so the user can start a new game and try again. So we'll say func reset cards. Our cards array will be a new array of card. Repeating card.example count 10. We'll put time remaining back to 100 again and make is active true. These match the default values we had when our views first shown. I should say this initialize for array is very, very clever. It can see we're repeating example cards again and again. You haven't got to specify explicitly it's an array of card unless you want to. You can actually remove that and Swift will just figure it out for you. You can do the same up here as well if you want to. If you want to, it's entirely personal choice. Anyway, that'll restart the game when we're ready. Next, we want to add a, a button to be shown that they can start again and it'll only be visible when they have no more cards to work with. So uh, inside this V stack here, we have time, we have a Z stack. After the Z stack, the inner Z stack, we're gonna say, if our cards array is empty, then do a button saying start again with the action, action of reset cards. We'll use padding, we'll use background of uh, white, We'll use foreground color of black, so it's nice and clear on the screen. Then we'll add a simple clip shape to the end. Uh, dot clip shape is capsule. So we can start again. Now we already have code that will reset the timer um, as needed, right here. This thing will set things back to normal when they want to start a new game and so forth. And we also have code on change that will track is active true or false depending on whether the app's in the uh, foreground or background. But now we need to stop the timer when the final card is removed and make sure it stays stopped when coming back into the foreground again. That line there is a problem. Now we can do this by modifying the remove card at index uh, method here. We can say go ahead and remove the card as asked. And if now card is empty, Awesome, is active, is false. So we'll show that button when the final card's been removed, but we've got to make sure that is active stays false. Even when they go to the background, foreground, whatever you want to, this line tr should only be triggered if our cards array is uh, empty or not. We'll check that very, very carefully. So we'll say uh, here, if cards dot is empty is equal to false, then make ourselves active again. So only if we have cards in our array do we reactivate the timer coming back from the background. And with that, 
we should find the whole thing works a lot better. The time I should pause when I get rid of all my cards. Let's wipe all these away, perhaps. Off you go. Come on. Away you go. 92, 92, 91. Boom. Done. I can press start again. And it resets nicely. So we now have a nice, fair ending to the game, whether you succeed by removing your cards or you don't. You get time zero, so you can't play anymore. Either way, the game ends very, very nicely.